just record to the cloud. All right. So for recording purposes, this is a um a mindset class. We're gonna start talking on communication. Um, this is Mr. Bird. And uh, I know Mr. Bird since I was 14 years old. He was my probation officer. I'm not ashamed to say that, um, but I'm gonna let him formally uh introduce himself. Hey class, how's everyone doing? Hope everyone is doing well this evening. Again, like he said, my name is Wendell Bird. I am a life coach, personal life coach and mentor. And uh, my business is called Hype, Helping You Prepare for Excellence this is what that stands for. I've been doing this for quite some time, uh, probably 15, 16 years. Um, met Kelvin at 14, like he said. I, I was his uh, probation officer. He was a uh, knucklehead, um, hard-headed uh, young man. But I saw the great in him. He had, there was a lot of great in him. And I, I refused to give up on him, just like I do with everybody else. I just refuse to give give up on someone. Sometimes people don't see the great in themselves. Um, and be, that could be for un, unseen circumstances or what's going on in the house or other, other, all kinds of circumstances. But I knew there was something greater in him that he did not see. So I never gave up on him. Um, with that being said, as a coach, um, and you're talking about communication, that was one of the things I had to learn how to do with him at, at the age of 13, 14, 15 years old is learning how to speak his language, um, how to speak with, to him without him refusing to respond. Cause sometimes as an adult, we can speak to someone or uh, of younger, of uh, younger than we are. And it'll cause them because of the way we speak, cause them to re refuse to answer or answer the way that you need them to answer. So learning how to communicate effectively was one of my greatest skills. And what I would say with my superpower is, is learning how to see hope in a hopeless situation or learning how to build something out of someone that never saw what they had to build upon. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, before uh, we like, um, I just mute myself and let you dive into like communication or anything of that nature. Um, does anybody uh, have any specific questions or anything they want to um, do? Do you mind, Mr. Bird? No, no, sir. No, sir. Um, if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the chat. Um, if you don't, you can just drop a two or you don't got to say anything. And you can ask questions throughout. I have no problem with that. Um, got you. Okay. Jordan. So say, one of the first questions I would, I, 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 we're talking about communication. What is, what is one of the biggest problems you see as you all are trading and things? What is one of the biggest problems with communicating in the trading world? With communicating, um, first I'll say discipline, first of all, um, will be one of the biggest problems I see. Um, uh -huh. I know that that can be related to communication, but one, um, due to communication, I would say, what is the biggest problem? Y'all can help me with this too. God, he got questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, um, let, let me let me go off of what you said, discipline, right? Mm -hmm. In the trading world, you have to have some discipline. You have to know when to let go when to move forward. You have to know to listen to someone who may know a little more than you do. Um, that is a big part of communication in the trading world. Uh, we don't know it all. And some of the biggest problems we have when it comes to trading is knowing when to say when, I don't know. If you don't know, you just don't know. Ask somebody. Don't think that you have to know everything to, to get ahead or to not feel like you are or feeling less smart or not as smart as somebody else, you know, oftentimes as we're commuting, com communicating, um, we don't want somebody to not, we don't want people to know what we don't know. So we stay ignorant in the process of not wanting other people to know what we don't know. So we have to be mindful of this is bigger than me. And, I, and we have to communicate that within the unit um, that this is bigger than me, and how can I help you help me? So as far as discipline is concerned, that is a big part 
of learning how, when to be disciplined enough to know when to say, I need help. No, yeah, I definitely, I, I can respect that. Um, I definitely see that. Uh, Jordan said, glad to have you. Um, D Wiz, both my brothers. Uh, D Wiz said, the simplest form of communication is understanding the language, truly understanding the concept, truly understanding concepts. Um, I would say that would be a primarily a primary issue. Yes. The other one is being patient. You know, when communicating, sometimes we want to move fast and get the answer and things like that. And the and being patient, you can learn along the way of the communi of of commun in the communication process. Uh, but if we're so busy trying to get from one space to the next, you lose a lot of information in the process. So we have to be patient. Um, when you talk about candlesticks and things like that, uh, we have to know that, um, hey, I can ask this person. I have to ask that person. Again, being patient and being disciplined helps us in this area of, of winning. Gotcha. So um, I'm going to uh, throw up. Uh, I, I definitely agree with um, what the way said as well. Um I normally love to add things onto stuff. So I'm digesting a, a few things that you're telling me and I'll um, try to add them onto it later, but I want to ask you some questions. So say with me being a trader and I was to come to you and I would ask you, you know, of course you can't give coaching specifically on trading. That would be like an arena for me um, or something of that nature, but you deal with um, mindsets and developing okay mindsets and things of that nature so i would ask you with say not having a not saying that you're not an investor i know you are but uh not having the knowledge behind like day trading right if i was to come to you and i was to ask you you know hey can you help me overcome fomo which that means uh fear of missing out or can you <laughs> over can you help me overcome me not following um my trading plan and not having discipline to it. Um, how would you go about uh, trying to help an individual or me in that sense? Um, a person that's had FOMO, fear of missing out, is is very anxious, right? This is not uh, something that we can be anxious at. There's a lot of learning to do. So what I would say to that person is take your time. Uh, it's it, we're get we're so busy trying to get to the to the jackpot that we miss a lot of learning and teachings along the way. So I would say, take the time, take more time to learn. And then you'll make more, you hopefully you'll make more to, uh, you'll do more, you'll do a lot better earning. Um, if you don't know what you don't know, you're trying to put so much in, you're going to miss out on something. And you also have to look at your style of learning. Um, some people, everybody learns, dip, learn differently. And if a person came to me and said, Hey, I need to know what can I do to slow me down? I'm very anxious. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I have been there myself at wanting things to happen at my pace. And if you know this world of trading, it doesn't happen at your pace or my pace. You have to work at their pace. And so you have to slow down, take the time to look at all aspects of this situation and always, always keep an open ear to hear from somebody who may know better. Um. All right. Cool. I'm gonna just dig into like what you just said. So I'm gonna just act like it's like it's me. What if I I don't know how to develop patience? Like, what is patience? You know what I'm saying? And I would say like, yeah. You know, you're telling me that you know it takes time, and you know, learn from people that basically have, you know, information. Don't be scared to ask questions. I get that, you know. All right, say I'm doing that. But in the midst of that process, like, how do I obtain that patience before I start asking you, like, how do I obtain that discipline? Like, what are some skills or what are some, what are some things that I can do? In any conversation, make sure you don't have, you don't have, understand that you don't have to be the life of that communication. So- you you don't have to be the you don't have to be the person with all the information, okay? So in, in when you're talking about being patient, right? Sometimes 
people who are not patient feel like they have to have something to say at every every conversation. You say something, they want to say something. Somebody else say something, they got to say something. They feel like they're going to miss out if they're not saying something. Sometimes it's best to just not say anything and listen. It's okay to learn what you don't know. And even if you think you know something, take the time to just listen to somebody else's point of view. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to do this trading. So your way may not be the best way, but let's listen to everybody's way. And let's, that will help you with your patience is taking the time not to have to always feel like, because that's what it is. You feel like if I don't say something, it ain't going to work. And it ain't gonna it ain't gonna work the way it needs to say, it needs to happen. So if I don't do it, who will? There's more than just you in this chat. Listen, take the time to listen. And a person that this is not just because you're trading. This is a this is something an attribute you've had all your life where you don't want to listen. You just want to dive in. And 95, 95% of the time when we're in communication with a person who always feel like they have to dive in or have a part of, those are usually people that we don't want to deal with on the uh, on a daily basis. All right. Um, man, I, I kept listening. I forgot this question I was about to throw <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. But all right. And I, I could get that. And, you know, even when you're talking about communication and you're telling me, I'm going to just add on a little bit before I ask you the question. Um, what I'm like, how I'm seeing and you talking about communication, I'm looking at like data. And I'm also understanding that you're saying, you know, take information also that's around you too. You know, don't just, you know, whatever the horse has in, on his head and he's just like focused, like to go, whatever. Don't just be all tunnel vision every single time. You know, that's why you have, you know, beautiful gifts that's everywhere that you can utilize, right? Yes. I get that. Um, but what I would say is, and me just knowing that I'm a profitable trader, you know, that's a great attribute to have and always to be a student of that nature. But what I would say is, what about in the in the time where it's not even for trading, right? Um, because I know you're giving it to me in all aspects. Um, and it's for me to like take in that trading um mentality part. But what about when it's time to buckle down, put your head down and focus and concentrate and start knocking out your goals to be able to, you know, achieve the the bigger goal off of the miniature goals, right? Um, and and blocking out the noise where you have to now trust yourself and not listen um, to everything that you're having around you. How, what would you say, how do I go about that with knowing that I still have to keep a mindful eye? One of the things I do is, is do a vision board, right? And, and, and start writing down those things that I need immediately. I need this, 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 and this. This will help me accomplish that. That will help me accomplish this and so on and so forth. Sometimes if we don't write it down, we'll miss a step or we'll we'll jump from this place to that place. We need to understand what is our, again, what is our learning style? If you write it down and you go to it, uh, you can have it in your bedroom, you can have it in a notebook or whatever you have, write it down every day, look at it, look at, see what you have accomplished. Because when, when every day, on an everyday basis, if you don't take the time to look at what you're trying to do, you'll lose focus on what your goal is. You got to remember your goal every day because I have done it myself where I don't look at what I'm trying to do. I've written it down, but if I don't go to it, it's just wrote down. That's it. So how do you get that discipline to go back to look at what you wrote down? What if I'm not, what if I'm somebody that can't write it down or if I did, I'm still not going back um, to follow through with that. What good, good question. Good question. We have we have iPhones. As I'm looking here, everybody have a phone, right? Um, if we would just we could we could put it in our phone. Check your check your log. Check your check your vision board. If we would do just the simplest things every day, it because it becomes a habit after you do it so many times. Because some of us just are impatient, and we just we just want to go through the day and think that I can remember everything. You can't remember everything every day. 
You, there's so much going on, especially in the trading world. There's so much going on. We have to understand that we can't remember everything. We have to want something more than we than we desire. The the end end goal of this. You have to want to learn how to communicate effectively. Before I ask any more questions, I I got a, a personal question. Yes. Um. Offline, I know I asked you already, like, you know, if you could, uh, you know, stop by and like, you know, do classes on different types of coaching um, yes. development skills. And I appreciate you. Um, seriously, Mr. Bird, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. But I do have a question, whether it's on like those classes or we or because I don't want to disrupt with like you have planning or like to be able to contribute. And I appreciate it. Yes. Um, do you mind doing like an integration class sometimes like with you and I, where it's just like still the coaching um, of what you do, but me putting in what I know of like trading and things of that nature and making it interactive, like with everybody else. That would be great. I would love it. Not a problem. Sure? For real? Yes. Yes. Would love it. All right. That's dope. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, I want to leave uh, the floor open. I, don't wanna, uh, I just don't want to be on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the you things I want to also say. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You had a, somebody had a question? Uh-oh. -uh. Okay. One of the things I wanted to talk about, too, is, is being stubborn. You know? Um, when we're talking about communication, sometimes we're stubborn and thinking we know everything, knowing more than what we do know. And when you're stubborn in, in a community, when it comes to communicating, you're, you're not listening. You just want to give information. You don't want to receive any. And again, like I say, you, there's always something to learn in every situation. There's always more to learn. So when we're being stubborn, um, about a trade or about what we're going to do. You're not listening. We lose out more than we gain. If we do this as a team and make it a team effort, we all win. And, you know, this don't only happens in the trading world, but this is your everyday life, learning how to communicate effectively, whether it be body language, whether it be facial expressions, whether whatever it may be, we have to, on a daily basis, uh, learn how to effectively communicate all day, every day. Think about how many times you come interact with different people every day. And the best people that you, the best people to interact with are those who's willing to listen, learn, and then give. Why do why you say that? Because if you find a person who's not willing to listen, they're not willing to learn. So you're just talking just to be talking. You're, you're talking to somebody who only want to give you their point of view. They're willing to give, but they don't want to receive. And if you're dealing with somebody who don't want to receive, everything that you're trying to pour into them goes where? I don't know. And it, you get nothing out of it. Yeah. And you you can tell, like like when you're in a conversation with somebody, you can tell when, when they're listening or when they're receiving something from you, from their like I say, from their body language, their facial expressions, oftentimes when you're you're having a, a conversation, when you and and you can say when you're trying to teach somebody, it is hard to teach somebody who's constantly trying to tell you a, a life story or something that happened and this excuse me this that and the other. When you're trying to teach them, it's like, are you listening? I'm trying to tell you about trading. You're trying to tell me about your situation that happened when you were six. Um, that person is not engaged in the conversation. So being engaged in that conversation is very important. And, and if you're engaged, it's hard to be stubborn in that, that situation. Yeah, look, before I even like come up with a question, I'm gonna just say that this is why I wanna do um, some classes with you. Uh, Cause like how my mind's thinking, I know that I have to like also, you know, tell people this and not assume that you think like this. Like everything that you're saying, 
Like, even though you're talking about other people, I'm looking at canvases. And when you talk about other people, I'm looking at time frames, right? Where it's like, okay, let me stop being stubborn. And I want to stay on this one minute. And I know that I got all this, you know, data that I've placed on my chart. But, hey, 30 minutes had went by. Let me go ahead and go to the, you know, 30 minute chart and see exactly what's going on or, or the one hour chart to be able to communicate properly um, to my mind, right? Because yes. even though the candlesticks are communicating to you, because this is just money, right? And all it's doing is creating like patterns and things of that nature. But what we do know is that certain patterns create certain things. So it's like, what are the certain things that we're looking for to be able to say, hey, look, this now is something concrete that I, I like to look for on the chart, where, where there's a reversal pattern, like, uh, uh, um, I know you guys know what I'm talking about, but like a pin bar or certain things, but how do I want it to relate to me? You know, um, being that I'm communicating with this person, meaning time frame, right? Okay, does my emotion, you know, resonate so I can be able, first of all, for the, the resonation, it's like, what is my reaction to this time frame, right? And like, you bringing me to that state of mind of just communication is like, okay, let me communicate with myself and bring myself back to when, okay, what was I adopting? You know what I'm saying? Well, like, because all that is the beginning of like your communication of the journey, you know, yes. but yeah, that's how my mind's interpreting it. Because like, whatever I do, I focus into like, okay, this is what, this is, if this was a therapy session or something like that, you know, whatever um whatever information is given given to me i know to put it into the aspect of exactly what i'm doing right so i think that that's uh i think it'd be really dope um so let, let me ask a question to the class let me ask a question had there ever been a time during uh, a session of trading that you didn't listen that hurt you uh, in the past Yes. Expl can you can you talk about that experience? So yeah, so I guess my experience was from overtrading. Okay. Um, so I should have listened and said, "Hey, you met the goal. Put you know, log out of the account. Don't place a trade." But I decided to place a trade. Took a risk. Didn't main didn't manage my stop loss because I just didn't want to lose. And then. <laughs> ended up losing more than I anticipated that, because of that stubbornness. That that part right there. Not knowing when to say when is a huge and, and um um thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not knowing when to say when that is a big part of communication is learning when to say when. In, in a trade, if you go too far, you know, because you you nobody wants to lose. And I remember like almost like going to a casino where you you win, you go in there not to lose, you you win something, and then you continue on and on and on it, and you lose more than you you came in there with. And and oftentimes when you're talking about community, because the first person you start talking to is who? Yourself. <laughs> you start communicating with you. The worst person to lie to is you, but we do it all the time. Oh, I'm only gonna do it one more time. Um, oh, this is the next, this is the last one I'm gonna do. And then, and then you lose, you say, Oh, I gotta get my money back. I gotta do this. I'm gonna trade this, I'm gonna do that. Oh, these candlesticks are looking good right here, right now. Oh, I'm gonna do this. Stop lying to yourself. You know from the from looking at it, it doesn't look good, but you go on anyway. But how do you, how do one know that we're lying to ourselves at that point? A person knows when they lie to themselves. I, I could be on my phone or I could be doing something around here. And I'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this for five more minutes and then I'm going to get started with dinner. And I, I look on my phone, I, 30 minutes have passed. I don't lie to myself. Stop. Just follow through what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to quit at this point, stop. If you know this is not looking good, stop. Call somebody. Communicate with somebody. Hey, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm working with. What do you think about that? Can you look at this and tell me what you think? What is your What is your take on this? No, yeah. Uh, D. Wiz said you can feel it, and I agree. It's just like what you're saying. Yeah, you definitely can feel it. 
Um, I'm just also forgetting the aspect because I'm trying to hone in on the question. I'm forgetting the aspect that you know my life. So it's like, since we have sessions, it's like, you know how to give me like my tools and like, look, Moody, implement this. So I'm trying to like look for like an implementation, but I get it. It's like, it's broad. So it's like, I, you're not, you really can't. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yes. You, you, it, when, when you're talking about communicating, when you're talking about doing this, um, you have to think about some of the, some of the um, things that you traditionally do in an average conversation, whether it be at somebody at the grocery store or anything, you communicate the same way when you're doing other things. Um, some, some of us tend to overshare. So that means we overbuy. <laughs> um, some of us don't say anything at all. So we lose out, you know, <laughs> you're smiling. What is that smile about? Oh, I was laughing about the uh, overbuy. You know, so, <laughs> so we buy more than we need and we lose out in the end. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's almost like what you were saying is like you have a plan. Hey, I'm going to go cook dinner after five minutes, right? It's almost like with a trade. I'm going to get in here and my stop loss is here because if it breaks this, then that means it's fa it, it failed. But then you're like, oh, a couple more. No, 50 more cents. No, exactly. I think it's going to come back. Oh. Exactly. And, and you have to say, go with what you know. Stick with what you know. If you stick with what you know, you won't go with the flow because you, you always want to win. And sometimes just the fact that we want to win Take us to a place we have never been. Yeah. All right. So um, let me give you some details. So say like, so what Melaine is saying right now, um, and that's the uh, young lady speaking, right? So when she's, you know, explaining what she's explaining, um, let's say she's like in a in a consistent rhythm of doing that, but she's now conscious of wanting to stop, to stop to do that, right? And yes. let's say that, you know, she works, um, she works, you know, uh, let's say uh, she has children. Um, let's also say that, you know, she knows exactly what she's doing and she's profitable but what's stopping her from like, let's say, and it, uh, Malena, I'm just, I'm just throwing things in there. I ain't talking much. Um, let's just say like what's stopping her is that, that one thing from breaking her through, right. Of just like, Hey, let me take another one. Um, I know it's easier to say, to say like, Hey, follow your rules, but what are some things that a uh, individual with like that lifestyle, I know it's not a lot, but that lifestyle, um, can do and let's say that they don't have a fearful mindset um they're just risky right okay and they're willing to go ahead I, I was gonna say is there anybody on here who has done just what he said and has lost very big or has I, lost I, period I, I i have before okay so when you keep going against what you know is the right thing to do, you find yourself uh, losing at a cost that you can't afford. Okay. And the more you lose, the more you're trying to make up to win. You know, uh, we have to learn when to say when that's the biggest thing in this game. Um, you know, I, um, I have learned over the years when it comes to doing things is that if I listen to myself or even listen to my spouse, sometimes you have to listen to somebody that's close to you that care enough about you to say, I know how you work. I know how you do things. Let me explain this to you. If you keep going, this is my, what may happen. You know, I'm looking out for your betterment and we have to have people around us. And in this group, I hope that this group is close enough to where we can say, hey, Malena, uh, that's probably not a good thing to do or say to someone else, hey, Moody, that I I understand that this is what you said to do, but this is these are my reservations about what you said. And give somebody a chance to explain to you where you get a better understanding on why you said do that. 
You know, sometimes we go and do things and don't question and we end up losing. Question, it's okay to question somebody, but do it in a way that's respectful and that you don't uh, diminish who they are or what they're trying to say. Absolutely. Um, Jordan, uh, uh, Melina said overconfidence, um, overly confident, overconfidence. Uh, Jordan um, also said he had a bad streak with that back in 2021. Um, D-Wiz also said he did as well. Um, Jordan, how did you deal with that? I made the adjustments necessary, but it started with talking to people who was in my corner that uh, they knew what was going on. And they could they gave me the, the push to be like, bro, come on now. I'm like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. How hard was it for you, Jordan, to listen to somebody who knew better or knew more? Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't hard because to listen to them because they were saying things I already knew, you know. So it wasn't like I had to to change a way of. I had to change. Um, I was latched on to something that I needed to let go of. And they were like, come on, bro. Like, you you know it. You see that this is happening in the market, you know? So act like you see it. I'm Basically, is how I took it. I'm like, damn, like, you right. Like, I'm sitting here tripping. So uh, it wasn't hard, but it was more of me taking the time to really make the adjustment, uh, you know, and make the change. You know, making the adjustments uh, with anything um, is so comfortable. It's, it's much more comfortable. I, I don't, you know, I know for me, um, making adjustments in life sometimes can seem un un um, uncomfortable, right? But once you make the the adjustments, it's almost like you just slide up in whatever situation. It's so much better when you make the adjustments. And um, I think Milena was saying something early that they're embarrassed. Or, um, is that what you said, Milena? That they're embarrassed about losing. Well, yeah, because then sometimes, too, in order for you to identify you have a problem, you have to admit it to yourself. And then you if you're reaching out to someone, you have to tell them, you know what, I've been constantly losing. And nobody wants to say that you're losing. What? You're losing this entire time? A whole year and a half? You've been losing? You know what I mean? So sometimes that fear and admitting, hey, I have a problem. Can you please help me? Because you feel like, oh, my God, like I'm less than. Not that you're less than, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes there's that fear yes. that people just don't want to ask for help. But it's okay yeah. to ask for help. Everyone's been there. Yeah, and, and that is big for most people asking for help because it seems like you don't know. It's not that I don't know. I just want to know more or I want to know better. You know, um, ignorance is not no not knowing is not knowing. Ignorance is not knowing where to find the help, and then knowing where the help is and not going to get it. So we have to know where the help is. You have someone like Moody, and you have other people who trades, uh, knowing to go to them and say, "Hey, I don't know." That's the hardest thing for some people. I know for me, at times, it has been the hardest thing for me. Um, if any of us, um, I think about uh, the Bible. There's been things in the Bible where I, I was ashamed to tell my pastor, I didn't know. I don't know this. I don't I don't understand it. And once I got the understanding, I went to him and said, hey, how do I find or get understanding? The best thing in life is understanding. And in this in the, in the trading world, you have to have understanding. And if you don't get it, you're gonna lose. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, yeah. I'd like to add on to it where it's like and um shed light to like something that you was able to instill in me like when I was younger, where it's like, yeah, I was I was a knucklehead, but I do always remember where you would tell me, like, bro, stop being so angry and just talk, talk to your mom. If you don't want to talk to me or anybody, at least talk to your mom. Because she's the one that's you know coming in here. And feeling a certain type of way, look at how you make her feel from your actions. You know what I'm saying? Where with me being a trader and, you know, like my wife is the one that wrote, like you can't really see him on my sticky notes and things of that nature, where it's just like whenever I'm feeling like down or unmotivated or maybe I'm stuck or anything of that nature, I get a lot of reinsurance from my wife. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Where it's like, let her know this is what's going on. But that's because I got married. I, you know what I'm saying? I always still do that with my mom, but it's like I have my wife. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, 
even when my trading, like I quit my job and everything, but it was like, whoa, I'm trying to blow like accounts, like this ain't mm -hmm. this ain't going the way like I thought it was supposed to be going. And I learned quickly where it's like, hey, the market, you you have to like continue to like adapt to it. Like, and it's not that you gotta continue to fix your strategy. It depends on the type of strategy you have now. Right. Yes. But and I had to learn that too, where it's like, you know, I was trying to do different things and I was even in the midst of like, man, let me go try this because this is working for that person or this or that, where it's just like my wife was the one that was able to sit me down and tell me, hey, what 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 got you here? And it's just like, she's the one that helped me remember. And I was like, oh, support and resistance, support and resistance and just knowing these candlesticks. I like these tweezer bottoms, these more stuff. She was like, what are you doing right now? I'm like... I'm trying to learn to strap. <laughs> and she's like, go back to what you know how to do. That will come by itself. Just go learn that. Stop trying to trade that. And I was like, well, that makes sense. Let me let me go ahead and do that. And you know, out of nowhere, I was able to learn that like simultaneously as I was just trading. It just all started to make sense. And I started to see it in a different light. But it came from being able to communicate like my emotions and like hey you know not being scared or saying hey look this is something i really want but like something's blocking me you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and and one of the things you said was is um you talked about your wife being a, a, your partner and and helping you to learn how to remember about sticky notes or whatever find you a uh, a way to learn how to communicate what it is that you're trying to accomplish because some of us don't have uh, a, a, a spouse, a uh, husband, wife, or whatever, significant other, um, find some way, uh, get your own system. If you don't have that, like I said, use your phone, use sticky notes. Uh, like I said, I have a vision board and it's my wife who says, have you looked at your board? Have you, what have you been able to take down? What have you been able to work with, work on? Did you get your book titles? Did you talk about your book chapters? Um, and when I had, I, I'm, I'm ashamed, like Melena said, I, I'm I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't work on this. And I don't even want to hear what she has to say if I say I haven't worked on any of this. I haven't. And sometimes you don't, but it doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you haven't put forth the time and you got to make that time. Uh, uh, just just put it first, put, put your time in first. And that's what every aspect of life Um how many how many of us in this group have children? Oh, I do. Uh I, I normally just hey, drop a one in the chat if you got children, drop a two in the chat if you don't. My loved ones be uh they be busy. They be cooking, handling their children. Say what, Jordan? Jordan said in two weeks. Oh, wait, what? Oh, my man, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. congratulations jordan hey let me say this to jordan and this is your first child jordan he playing with you i bro. think he was joking, he was joking. <laughs> oh oh okay <laughs> nah, uh oh, uh oh he said what <laughs> okay. i don't know i don't know let me stop playing like that whoa <laughs> you wrote Jordan, you said I know in about two weeks. <laughs> I put a two. I put a two. He said put a two. <laughs> but at the same time, anyway. Anyway, very young. Yes, yes. Anyway, for those of us who have children and and you know, learning how to, I, I learned a lot of how to communicate effectively when I had a son. And the way I used to communicate with my my parents was very toxic. And I knew I didn't want that. And in the trading world, you don't want to be toxic. And when you're trying to learn something, so you have to be mindful, not only what you say, but how you say it, not only what you ask, but how you ask it, what you put in is what you get out. Um, and I'm not talking about the trade itself. I'm just saying in your communication styles and, and you can make somebody want to deal with you, or you can make somebody not want to deal with you at all, all in the way you, you learn how to communicate effectively. Uh, one of the things I always say to families and, and, and people I deal with, yelling, fussing, and cussing are all forms of communication. Just give me a time when that has worked for you. It doesn't. 
It doesn't. Because if you yell at me, I'm going to yell back at you. You curse at me, I'm probably going to curse back at you. You know, are you fussing me? I'm going to ask you, why the hell are you fussing at me? Um, and therefore, whatever you're trying to convey to me, whatever, whatever you're trying to say, I'm not listening to learn. I'm listening to argue. I'm going to give it back to you the way you gave it to me. Yeah. And what I tell... Say again? No, my bad. My bad. Keep going. No, I, what that does... And one of the things I learned in the military, because I'm, I'm prior military... Um, I was in the Navy, U.S. Navy. And one of the things I learned through my my style of communication, because I learned how to communicate as, as my parents had taught me, which was very toxic. And when I thought I was getting away with something, I really wasn't. When I when they were asking me to do something, I would tell them I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. You get somebody else to do it. They asked me to do something else. I ain't doing that. I'm going to eat. I'm, you get somebody else to do it. I did this for about a year. And um. I went out and bought a ticket to come back to the United States because after you've been over there for a year, I was in Holy Lock, Scotland. I had went over there for a year. And so now I went and bought my ticket. My ticket was about $1,500 to come back to this United States round trip ticket. So you put in a chit um, to have it signed by your supervisors and things, and it, it comes back in three days. Well, it's been five days. So I asked my immediate supervisor, I said, hey, man, have you seen my chit? He said, yeah, I turned it in to chief now. Long story short, I went up and I asked Chief, where, where's my chit? I, I I put it in. What chit you talking about? And then I got really upset. Start yelling. So he looks in his box. He said, oh, you talking about this one? I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay. Uh, I said, why haven't it been sent? You know, long story short, he said, okay, um, we're, we're, we apologize, uh, Seaman Bird. And he said, um, what are you qualified to do? I started looking around the office. Mm. Um, he said, are you qualified to drive a boat? I said, no. Are you qualified to tie knots? No. Are you qualified to do splice a line? No. Are you qualified? What I do, I, 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 I tore up the communication when I kept saying, I'm not going to do that. So every class they sent me to, I was like, that's for somebody else. I ain't tying no boat. I ain't doing this. What I'm saying to you all is that at some point in time, if you don't learn to communicate, even with difficult situation in difficult situations, it's going to come back to get you and bite you in the tail later on. And that could be very expensive in this line of work. So mm -hmm. learn how to effectively communicate, even when you don't want to, or don't think you know how to um, treat people the way you want to be treated. Talk to people the way you want to be talked, spoken to. And some of us, just don't know how. And, and if that's the case, you know, please, please, by all means, um, I would love to sit with you and talk with you about it um, on how to effectively communicate. And like I was saying earlier, um, I was a terrible communicator. Um, I felt like what I said was the law and how I said it, you better just accept it and don't say nothing because it's going to get worse. Well, I had to learn how to effectively communicate. And it's, it's something today, learning how to effectively communicate. People come to me and ask me how to deal with a difficult situation. And how do I communicate when somebody else has miscommunicated with me? And I look back and I say, wow, I have come a long way. So just learning how to effectively communicate not only helps you in, in this, but it helps you in life with, with your spouse, with your, uh, with your children, with your family, and just at work or your business. Effective communication takes us everywhere we want to go, even in places you never thought you'd see. Mr. Bird. Yes. Uh, so quick question. Uh, could you give some, some more like tips or uh, advice when dealing with communicating because you know it's it's like a double-edged sword where we as individuals have our preferred style of communicating yeah. um, but then everybody that we communicate with you know we communicate our own way but then everybody has a different way that they prefer to be communicated with uh, or how they see and perceive where you know I could say Moody man get off my phone dude and he'll be like ha, ha you know like we just like that's how we talk. But if I said that to Bill, Bill might be like, dang, does Jordan not actually care about talking to me? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, again, I go back to the military. People used to say, well, how come 
Bird can say or do certain things, and he doesn't get in trouble when Jordan does it. He get rolled up. Well, we have to learn other people's style of communication, right? And once you learn somebody else's, and sometimes you're just dealing with toxic people. And when you're dealing with toxic people, Jordan, uh, uh, they may be narcissistic uh, or whatever they may be. You have to know when to say when. Some people you're just not going to be able to communicate with because they're not going to respect your your style of communication, communicating. Right. Have you ever been in, involved in a, in a in a conversation with somebody who all they want to do is yell, fuss and cuss? And you're trying to say, hey, listen, I'm just trying to explain to you, sir, ma'am or whatever, um, that this is how you make. I always say, tell people how what they did or said made you feel. You know, I've always taught my son, start with the good. Jordan, look, every time we're on a call, you are awesome at calling trades. You, you do this, you do that, and this, that, and the other. However, the other day when we was on a call and you made this statement, it made me feel as if you were saying, I didn't know what I was doing and I shouldn't be in the group. And I, I really, that really bothered me. Jordan, I haven't spoken to you in four weeks because of that. And, but I have finally come to you. And then you say to me, it's the part Oh, man, I wish you had came to me four weeks ago. That was not what I meant. What I meant was A, B, C, and D. And I go, oh, wow. But because some of the things I have been through in life, I think everything is against me and everything is about me. And I lose focus on what it is you're trying to say because I'm dealing with something that happened back then or back there, right? So when you're when you're dealing with difficult people, who don't know how to communicate in your way of communicating, um, you sometimes use that to say, well, listen, we're, I can see we're not going to get anywhere during this conversation. So I'm going to release this. And if you ever want to come back and talk about it, I'm more than willing to. But at this point, this is not going anywhere. So I'm just going to let this go and just just be done with it. And that can be with a uh, with, with uh any relationship, whether it be boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, um, I do it with my wife. You know, if she gets upset and she starts yelling and starts saying some things, I was like, you know what? I have promised you that I would never talk to you like that again. So I'm going to keep my promise. However, you didn't make that promise, but I surely wish you would make um, some kind of adjustments on when you get upset on how to speak to me, because I don't speak to you in that manner. And I surely don't appreciate it. I didn't curse her. Didn't shout, but today my wife and I have a great way of communicating because I kept not giving in to what I wanted to do because the old me would have done the same thing. You you yell at me, we're going to yell back. So I uh, hope I answered your question, but yes, uh, dealing with difficult people or dealing with trying to get people to understand how you communicate. Yeah. Um, if you date a lot, you'll find that You'll like somebody, but you don't like the way they communicate. They don't talk enough or they talk too much um, or they lie. You know, those people you will stray away from because that's not your way of communicating. And we always have to find people around us. I have people around us who we enjoy communicating with, Jordan. And that's with anybody. I got How many a, of I, us? Go ahead. Go ahead, Jordan. I like Oh no, it's, it's moody now. Oh, know. moody, moody. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, 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 um. So, like, to add to like what Jordan was saying, like to um dive in into your mind and grab some tips on like communicating, right? Um, like he was mentioning, um, say like you know he could be like, and I just use me. I could talk to to Jordan and be like, bro, leave me alone, and he knows like, dang, it's not nothing going on. It's something going on with moody real. Quick. I hit him up later. Um, or say he could communicate with you, right? And just be like, man, leave me alone. You could take it like, oh, snap. Like, what? all right, whatever. Like, the heck did I do to you? And like thinking that it's something like with you. For the for the person that's like me, that's doing that communication, what are some tips that I can utilize um, on like, and I know it's like a behavior thing, but what are some tips that I can personally utilize when, when I go about communicating with others and say that I don't know 
I don't know how this per person communicates. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing my best to communicate the, the way that I do, but I, I don't, I can't control or know someone's perception. So what's a good form of going about communicating? Um, what are some tips, not a good form, but what are some tips that I can utilize on my day-to-day -day basis? When you know how somebody is on a day-to-day -day basis, like if say you know I don't married, know, say, say oh, I hold don't on, know. Hold on, hold on. When you know how somebody is on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm going to give you both, right? When you know how somebody is on a day-to-day -day basis, and today when I say the same thing I usually say to you, oh, big head boy, and you say, all right, you call me that again, it's going to be some problems. Okay, that's not usually the way Mr. Bird communicates. Something must be going on. A lot of times we take that personal, and because other people may be around, you say, well, what, what's cracking? What's going, what's going on? Hey, it could be on if you wanted to be on. But that's not really what you want to say. That's not what you mean because y'all are friends. So we got to learn that when a person is not having a good day, instead of you taking it, a, a, a being a, offended by what they said, try to find out what is going on. Just, just sometimes we're going through things that we don't talk to anybody about. And it's more, it's bigger than what we can handle, but we don't know where else to lay it. Okay. We don't, men cry in the dark. We don't know how to communicate with people. We haven't been taught how to communicate effectively with people. So we think that our problems are unique to ourselves. Like I'm going through this. No other guy will be feeling this way. I hate myself. Nobody else will feel this way because they look this way or they act that way. But you don't know how somebody else is putting on from day to day. Right. So that's if you're dealing with somebody who you know how they respond every day. But if you're dealing with somebody that you walk into the grocery store and and, and you don't know how they communicate every day, you got to ask yourself, who got more to lose? I don't know this guy, but I know what I got to lose. And is me being right going to change this person here? Because they're not worth me losing everything I got going on, right? So you got to ask yourself, who got more to lose in this situation? And if I'm going to always choose me. I'm always true. I'm not going to let somebody disrespect me in a conversation, whatever, but I got more to lose. So you have to learn. Sometimes you got to win. You got to lose to win. So that means if I don't have to, if I got to not say anything to you and walk off, I say it's a win-win. Somebody else may say, oh man, you let him talk to you like that. Or you let that happen. Bruh, I got more to lose than, than huh. I ain't going to sit here and talk about what all I got to lose, but I know I got a lot to lose and it's not worth me having this chit chat or this chitter chitter chatter with you um, because you're not having a good day or you don't want to talk to me as if I'm a man, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, I get, yeah, I respect that. And that's something that like, it's just going about like on the hows or why, or like on just community, I see what you're saying and utilize that. It, are you telling, well, I don't want to assume, are you telling me that I can also utilize that with, an individual that I don't know how they communicate or anything. Oh, Just yes. Every, every day. Every okay. day. Let me tell you, my day, my, every day. Be when I leave. Don't be on the defense, but be more well, my mind says. Don't, don't be on the defense, but be on the offense and don't take nothing offensive is what my yes. mind is thinking. Whatever gets projected, ask a question about it. We never know where somebody else is in their mind, right? Yeah. I know these things when I leave the house every day. I have to help people from where they are, not from where I think they should be, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, as yeah. I go out the house every day, every day when I go out the house, I ask God to, to put me in front of somebody I can speak life into, somebody I could say something great to. And I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday, and as I was going through the aisles looking for Christmas stuff, and I said to this lady, I said, uh, she said, oh, I'm almost, I'm sorry, I almost ran into you. I said, hey, we all doing the same thing. Don't worry about it. I said, we're all trying to get to the same place. And she said, oh, thank you. I said, oh, no, no problem. You know, I said, um, are you getting everything you need? She said, I am. She said, you know what? Thank you for being so kind. You didn't have to be that way. I said, yeah, I do. I said, that's the way I govern myself, to be kind. She said, man, I wish there was more people like you every day. I said, every day I try to pray that I've run into somebody such as yourself that I can speak life into. And today I have, I want to say this to you. I said to that lady, I was taught by my mother. It doesn't cost you anything to speak. It doesn't 
take anything from you, doesn't bring anything to you sometimes. But if you speak the right way, it'll bring more to you than it'll take from you. And if a person doesn't speak back, that's their loss, not yours. Don't take it personal. They're doing, they're dealing with something personal, whether it be for whatever reason, whether because they don't like your type of people or whatever it may be. Don't take it personal. You did your part. And that's the same way as communication. Learning, to, hey, if I do my part and I know I did the right thing, sometimes you have to walk away. You have to let something go. It's always tomorrow. We don't have to keep it going because I feel like I have to prove a point to somebody who don't matter. How many of us on this call have, have argued with somebody you don't care about? <laughs> Well, uh, well, I have. Don't why don't argue with somebody you don't care about. You you argue with somebody you love because you're trying to get a point across to them to show them. You know, I, Moody. I think you and I talked about this the other day. There, there's a lot of love in the word no, um, and we talked about how you should always, if I care about you, like like when you was 14, 13, 14 years old. One of the things my clients knew is Mr. Bird loved me. And not not by my words, but by my actions. Am I right or wrong? Um, I'm, you're right, Mr. Bird. Real quick, um, cause I just seen Jordan have posted something. Uh, okay. Do you have like an extra couple of minutes, cause I know we was just gonna go to like seven o'clock. But if yes. you have a couple of extra minutes, uh, Jordan is gonna um postpone his class so uh the session could continue on. Um, okay. Stay with you. Yes. Okay. Cool. I'm sorry, I appreciate I that. To stop you in mid thought. Oh, no problem, no problem. Um, uh, thank you for that, Jordan. But yes, uh, we talked about how um, and you made me lose money. You made me lose my train of thought. Um, um, we have to, uh, and when it comes to communicating on a daily basis, learn how to say no. Sometimes, sometimes we take more in than we can give. And we, when we're communicating something, like I'm, I'm a. Some of us are people pleasers, Jordan, and we take in, we, we'll keep piling stuff on our plate, but we can't eat it. And then we feel like failures because we haven't been able to accomplish all those things we said we wanted to do. Trading is the same way. We put in, we, we want to trade this, we want to do this, we want to make a mark on this. And you come, you, you feel worse afterwards than you did before you started. Yeah, um, Melina has her hand raised. Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Malena. Okay, great. So I think what my question to you is to try to help communicate to others is um one, I think that oh geez, I almost hit this lady. Sorry. Um, so one of the things is people want to be successful traders, right? You know what I mean? People see the wins, people see the profits channels, and they're trying to get the hundred, two hundred percent or whatever, but then they try and then they just can't. What advice you give to someone that can help them communicate to say, hey, you know, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? Because I know that there's people attending the classes. They're doing this. They're, they're putting in the work. They're putting in the time. But are they not asking for the right? Are they not asking the right questions? You know what I mean? Like, how is it going to help them? You know, what what tools can we give to that person to help them become successful? You know what I mean? Like being humble, being humble. Being humble enough to say, I, you know what? Ugh, I don't know the answer to this. So I'm going to call Moody. I'm going to call Malena. I'm going to call Jordan. I'm going to call Miss Ash. Being able to say, I don't know. It's okay. And that's the problem we have a lot of times is that we don't like to say we don't know. We, we're ashamed to say, I don't know something. Again, um, the older a person gets, the harder it is for that person to tell somebody what they don't know. And we feel that much worse because we feel like we should know it. Again, earlier I said we have to help people from where they are, not from where they think, not from where we think they should be. Somebody might say, well, Malena, how long have you been doing this? You've been doing this for six months. You've been doing it for two years. And you don't know that? Be mindful when you're speaking to somebody. Just because they don't know what you know, don't make them any less than you are. Just help them. Pick them, from, pick them up from that point and say, oh, Melena, I thought you knew that. I'm sorry. So let me, let me, you have time later on and I could call you and we can sit down and talk about 
this aspect of trading? I would love to. Oh, I, no problem. I get out of class at 6.30. I'll be able to call you around 7. Are you free? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll carve out some time for you, Milena, and we'll we'll handle this. But I'm glad you asked. I love. I would love to show you how to do this. It's not as hard as you might think. Okay? I'll see you at 7. Appreciate it. How does that sound, Milena? Oh, no, that sounds perfect. Sorry. I just was in a trade. Sorry. I do futures. So I'm kind of like, ah, sorry. <laughs> I thought morning star. <laughs> but yes, knowing when. <laughs> um, uh, I'm loving it, Milena. Yes, knowing how to ask. And, and I'm going to tell you another thing, learning how to receive. Some of us don't know how to communicate and receive knowledge. Because you think you're so caught up in what you know, nobody can tell you anything. You lose out on in life. Some of the best blessings I've ever received in life has come from people I never knew. But I didn't know their knowledge. I didn't know, well, you don't know what people know. But just know that you can always learn from anybody or anything. So just give somebody a chance to teach you. And if I don't know you don't know, I can't help you. Because oftentimes people assume that I, I assume that because you're doing this, that you know what you're doing. I know some aspects of it, but I don't know all. So just because you don't know it all and then you've been doing it for a certain amount of time. It's OK to ask. But that's the most humbling part of this is being able to communicate to somebody this part of it. I don't understand. I got this aspect and I got that. But this one I don't understand. How can you help me understand this part? And I guarantee you, you will get so much further if we just horn in on certain aspects of trading or whatever it may be. I, I don't know how to read the candlesticks when they're this color and that color, or they're sitting this high or that high. I don't know. That's the part that gets me. Oh, man. Let me tell you how I learned. I did this, this, and this, and this. I wouldn't have known to tell you that if you never ask or you never put that out there. So as a community, as a trading community in this chat, we have to be willing to communicate effectively with one another and not make each other feel like, oh, you should have known that, or you shouldn't, oh, why don't you know that? Or I, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know what to tell you. That's not effective communication. Yes. I would say, uh, I was just gonna um, add on and say, uh... I would definitely say, I know this is an introduction to communication, but um, I'm not micromanaging at all. Um, oh, you're good. I know I want to do some, real quick, I know I want to do some classes with you because I just, I want to like, as you do some like coaching things, we can develop it together. I'll bring the trading aspect into it and like my experience and make it like cohesive where it's engaging with every single person on here or whomever wants to engage. Uh, but you can still do like, your coaching things, um, you know, aside, um, like your own classes and things like that. Um, I just want to do something with you. I, I know it's going to be dope and I know you. Um, but one thing I would say is, uh, I think a part two of communication, because I, I think with some people, what I hear, and this is just my ass assumption, right? Opinion, um, is they want that next level. Like, what do I do once I ask for help? You know what I'm saying? But, but and I know like it's an introduction and you're staying on there because it's like if you don't ever ask for help, there's nothing that you know what I'm saying you have to you got to ask to receive, you know, you got to OK, anything like you had to get a job, you act somewhere, you did something, someone helped you. You know what I'm saying? You asked you asked God something, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, um. I wouldn't say let's let's go honing into it, but if you were like, what's that second level of okay, now I'm there and I'm asking for help and things of that nature. I know you started speaking on like the receiving part on like being able to receive, right? Um, what is those next levels like once you're starting to get like a foundation of understanding communication? What's that what's that next level to communication? Being willing to accept change. Like the, your way of learning may be difficult, may be difficult for you because you've been learning this way the whole, you know, your whole life. But being willing to change, like I'm trying to show you that with this, it takes that. 
And what you've been doing is making it diff more difficult for you to learn this aspect of trading. So being willing to change, and that's hard for everybody, is change, learning something different in a different way and having the mindset to be willing to accept what somebody else is telling you and to, to put it into practice. But That's the next it, level. Why, why is it hard? I have it's hard because we're so it hard. It's hard because we, we all want things to remain the same. You know, I remember I'm 56 years old, right? So I remember growing up and we would get new toys. Like when Atari came out, I remember my parents, saying, Oh, we didn't have these kind of toys. And we was, Who's coming up? Or, or you know, that's change. Change when you go on a I, job. I throw, let me throw a monkey wrench in it. What if what if I'm an individual like I'm ready, I, I'm ready for change, and I know now I'm on my second process, and I'm I'm meeting some resistance. You know, you have to ask yourself why are you re re uh, receiving some resistance? Because oftentimes in communication, we think that because we're communicating, it's effective. And your resistance may be because of the way you're coming at a person or why you're coming at that person. Sometimes people may come and ask you a question, not because they don't know, but they're trying to find out what you don't know. And then once you re realize that, you come back with resistance at this person. Like, are you trying to call me an idiot? Are you trying to say I'm not <laughs> smart? Are you trying to say I don't know what I know? And we, we give resistance. Am I right or wrong? You know, yeah. when somebody yeah. try to show us up, you know, we have to understand that when when we're receiving help, when we're willing to receive help, it's there. There shouldn't be unless the person that's trying to help you didn't want to help you in the first place. And that's another thing of communication. If you don't want to do it, don't. Don't. Because it'll show in your in your teaching. You'll you'll have resistance. Because, you know, again, help people from where they are, not from where you think they should be. Because sometimes you can get something a lot easier than another person, right? And because you get it a lot easier, you'll look at somebody else at, the class got to slow down because you don't know this. You know, and I remember uh, teaching Sunday school years ago with my son, and he was probably in his third, fourth grade doing uh, Sunday school. And other kids would be trying to read and they would say, what is one of the pr profit? I, and I would say, son, do not do that because that makes that person be afraid to read out loud. That makes that person feel dumb. It makes that person. We have to be mindful when we're giving help that we don't give it in a way that makes the other person feel less than who they are. Man, I just, man, Mr. Bird. I'm gonna talk to you offline. I, I keep forgetting who you are and the things and, and the people you're connected with. Man, I don't care. I'm gonna just say I, I I want you to get me into the school, especially the one I got kicked out of. I want to go. I want to go serve. I want to go help people. Yeah. No problem, sir. No problem. We'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk. Um, but definitely. Uh. Um. I don't really have um, any more questions because my mind is just like thinking on like, oh, cool, I can do this for, you know, the group and stuff like that. Because, you know, I got some things planned. I don't want to talk about it right now, but mm -hmm. I think that this would be a great like benefit where it's like, hey, you can come talk to, you know what I'm saying, a successful trader. But also while you're talking to me, I'm giving you my experience. And the things that I went through, but talking to a mindset coach where it's like, okay, cool, where you can, you know, I'm going to be going off of like what you're saying and things of that nature. But depending if I say something where it's like, no, hold on, there needs some correction right there. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm always willing to listen to my brother. Um, so I just, I'm just cultivating things in my mind. I need to put it down on paper, but I think it'll be super dope. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I know like, I don't know, we'll figure something out where it's like every two weeks or something of that nature, whatever you're always uh -huh. trying to, I know you're about to go on a cruise right now. So, um, wh whatever we can figure out and I, I, I truly appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you, Milena, for your compliment. Um, I, again, my name is Wendell Bird. I have, a uh, my business is called Hype. H-Y-P-E, that stands for helping you 
prepare, prepare for excellence. Um, and that's what I do every day is trying to help somebody every day prepare for excellence. Um, if you, uh, I'm, I'm a mentor slash coach, a uh, life coach. If anybody would like to get in touch with me, Moody can get you my information. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, would love to work some uh, work with you. And so uh, if you want to know how, if you need any more information regarding hype, just give me a call. Definitely. I'm going to get with Jordan um, and I'm going to talk with Jordan and see like um, how things can uh, work out and like see uh, what we can do, because I know um, people definitely need coaching. And um, I would tell you too, don't, don't be shy, uh, Mr. Bird. Like they know, they know me, they know, they don't know me, me, but they know, um, you know, I'm, I'm a handful. So what I would say is like one thing that this community does understand um, is that how you are in life is how you are on the charts, right? And that goes with anything. How you are in life is how you're going to be in the gym. How you are in life is how you're going to be when you play games. You know, if you're disrespectful to your parents, you're going to be disrespectful to the people on the screen playing your game, you know, so things that I need. So they definitely understand that. Um, I just want to add like an extra like coaching where it just makes it like a trading coaching um, as well. But um, definitely want to get with Jordan and see. Uh, I definitely see the value of it, but uh, definitely see how um, it could be a fit um, to the uh, community. Oh, great. Great. I appreciate it. Uh, any Anything anybody needs on this chat or, or if they know somebody, a family, a friend, a uh, family member, a friend, uh, please give them my information. Um, and if anybody have any other questions before we get off today, I'm willing to take a few questions prior to us uh, jumping off. I appreciate it. And that's regarding communication or anything. Yeah, y'all feel free. Y'all not paying for none of these sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the one thing I'll say, yeah, this was a great class. I think the one thing that I noticed that was like the deal breaker was discipline. And I think maybe that's the missing link for a lot of people because maybe, yeah, they can't communicate, they need help, but it's just the discipline. So maybe creating a series around, do you even know what discipline is? Do you know how to say no to yourself? Do you know how to control yourself? Do you know how to control your emotions? Can you control that? Journal, I only took three trades. Limit yourself to this. You know what I mean? Can you actually even follow rules? Like if there is a rule, you enter here, you exit here. Can you even do that? If you're telling a kid to do that, if your teacher's, you know what I mean? Like, can you even do it? Hey, yes. That's I'm a good one, beans, Mr. Bird, I'm going to spill a little bit of beans. Jordan don't like when I be doing this sometimes, but uh. Malena, he's an artist. Like he, he uh, not that he draws, but he, he creates paintings and things of that nature. When I abstract did, art, abstract art. My apologies. Uh, when I went uh, down, uh, I don't want to call it your basement, but downstairs, it was like yeah, downstairs, basement downstairs. <laughs> um, when I went down there, he had showed me because I had told him like what I wanted to do, and he was like, "Moody, I definitely help you. I love what you're doing." Um, I like he has he has things laid out where he's like, "Look, I can teach them this, 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 and this, and this, and that." And then and with me, it's just like. Okay, cool. I want to do something so to integrate like with trading, but bro, he has a list of all of that stuff, like how to deal with your emotions, how to deal with your behaviors, right? How to implement patterns to like get out of a pattern to he's one of my coaches. No, that's dope. Yeah, no, I mean, again, like I found success with futures and it's great. And I just want like other people to like find their niche or their success with all the things, the tools that we've learned in MSC. So it's kind of like how do they, you know, how to zone in? And now what I'm trying to practice now is discipline. Like I was yes. good yesterday. I was bad today. But why did I do it? I was bad last Friday. And I said, I'm not going to do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then today, Thursday, went back to my old ways. Like, what is my problem? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, yeah. but. Well, it's all about what's important to you and what your needs are. You know, um, if my if... need is to stay disciplined <laughs> <laughs> and, to, and to keep my capital. <laughs> yes. So. If those are your needs and, and those are your desires, see, and some of us get our, our um, and when it comes to discipline, your desires get in the way. You were very disciplined, but then your desire came about. And when your desire comes into play, you'll, you'll set your discipline aside. I 
how do you do? Uh, I, I, I'm gonna end up having to get off, but it's just like you know me. Every time you drop something, I'm gonna go in deeper. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you? Um, Melina said greed and FOMO facts. <laughs> facts. Yeah, um, I, I think desire is a nice way of saying greed and FOMO. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you. You know, you think about what you want. I, I do want that, but I want this more though. Right now, just for right now, right? And let's, and I think, you know, let's say like a diet. Like I really want to lose weight and that's my, that's what, you know, I gotta be disciplined to, to lose weight. But then you pull up to the to the, to the the window and you say, um, can I have, you look at it. It's like, I know I should get a salad, but... <laughs> Let me have a double with extra cheese, mayonnaise, and a Coke with light ice. Your desire was bigger than your discipline. So you got to learn to take your desire down and build your discipline up. Um, I just want to set a say an example that just happened. Uh, I want to say it was yesterday. Okay. Uh, Jordan, Jordan displayed that like vividly where and and, and and to his totality, a matter of fact. Um he was he he wasn't having a great uh I don't want to say he wasn't having a great day, um, but his mindset wasn't where he knows that it, it needed to be for trading, right? And he put that out to the group and let them know that, right? Um, you know, we all send loving and support and healing to him. Um, but you can see from his response, he was like, you know, like how we do what we do. Like you can tell he wants to do it. Right. So his desire, he still wants to come trade. Right. And Jordan, I don't know if you're busy right now. Um, if you're allowed to, if not allowed, but if you're able and have the time to unmute yourself, if you can add on to this where, Jordan um displayed that like and we all know how Jordan is like oh no let me go I'm, I'm gonna still go ahead and trade or whatever but he even said you know that wouldn't demonstrate discipline right still showed a little bit of his desire of wanting to trade right but didn't allow his desires to outweigh his needs right and to take care of himself and to love himself to be able to pour into others um I think that that's a that to what you said, that's a great example. Um, Jordan, if you're able to um, unmute yourself, I'm not sure if you have the time and say like, if you can just speak on that, like how does how do you know to lower that desire? How do you know to say, hey, I have to stay disciplined and do that even though you know you would like to do something else? Well, one thing I was saying, Jordan, you could chime in anytime you can. Um, is knowing when you don't feel like it. When you don't feel like it, you just don't feel like it. And it's okay to be vulnerable. And it's okay to say, hey, I just, I'm not feeling it right now. When you're not feeling something, don't go forward. Don't force yourself into something that you're not feeling good about because that's when most mistakes or most, uh, most of the time we do something we wish we had never done. Because if you're not feeling it, if your heart isn't in it, just don't move forward. Just like he did, being vulnerable and saying, hey guys, Today, I'm just not having a good day or either today, I'm not feeling it. And that's okay. And I hope that the rest of you say, well, you know, hey, um, is it, if it's anything that we can do to help you, let us know. But if you if it isn't, we hope you get better tomorrow. But it's not, oh, man, what's wrong? You got you to, gotta, man, snap out of that. Man, you can do this, man. Sometimes we need a break. Sometimes we need a mental break. Sometimes we need to explain, I understand how to explain, I need a break. I, I cannot function like this today. It's not conducive to my well-being. And because yeah. every from day to day, things change, life change, people change. It's okay to not feel okay. Yeah, I'm going to hit you up because I know I need to uh, get some more tips to implement into my life where sometimes I run into that where it's like, I still push through because of a resistance and I know like how stronger you get through a resistance, but sometimes you need that full break to be able to say, it's just like the charts, like, Hey, 
We picked up a little bit of liquidity down here, but we need to break the support, pick up this liquidity to be able to uh, reach a new high, right? We like, we need the capital. So it's like, no, nah, definitely. You got to know sometimes when to say no. That That's good. Let me give you an example, right? It's one thing that when you, like, let's say your phone is low, right? And you know you need to charge your battery. If you charge your battery while you're on the phone, while you're working on the phone or playing a game or whatever, it charged so much slower. But if you just take a break and just set your phone aside, just take some time, set your phone aside. You go grab your phone. It was on 12 percent. You grab it. It's on 65. And that was that's 30 minutes ago. Wow. I was able to give my phone a break. Give Sometimes we have to take a break from this because this is this is mind boggling. Sometimes this takes a lot of mental space to do. And you have to understand that some days you're not going to have that space. And it's okay. It's taken up with other things. Life still is life. And things are still happening. You don't always have the wherewithal to do the things that you want to do. But be mindful that you are able to say, hey, I can't. I, I, today is not a good day. You know, and to ask help, ask for help. Hey, Moody. Uh, hey, Malena. Um, hey, Isaiah. Um, Hey guys, this this is what I'm dealing with. Um, I'm gonna just give you the 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 the, the gist of it, and um, this is how I'm feeling. And just be able to, if you can't help a person, sometimes the best help you can give is listening. And listening is a really big part of communication, effective communication. Sometimes I don't need you to fix it; I just need you to hear me out. That's a huge part of what we do every day is learning to listen more and talk less. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Um, I appreciate your time, Mr. Bird. I ain't gonna hold I appreciate you. you guys and your time. I'm not going to hold you up too much longer. Um, I got some things I got to do as well. Um, I appreciate everybody coming out. Um, if you would like, uh, you can go into the class ideas and, and drop some classes that you would like to see from this or things of that nature. Um, you know, this is something that you guys think uh, that will help you guys, right? It's just, you know, Jordan and I can be able to look at that and be like, okay, this is something that, you know, the Discord needs. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, figure out a way to make sure that we implement this, right? Um, we're all here for each other. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would say, you know, that's how I always close it out. May the Lord continue to bless us all. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, uh, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, back to the crown of our heads. Um, and yeah, yes, yes. You know, remember to be kind to others. Uh, move out of love and treat people how you want to be treated. Remember that if the world is reflecting something that you don't like, that's because you need to change that about yourself. The world only mirrors with who you are, right? And the day that we really can grasp whatever our minds can conceive and believe, our minds will be able to achieve that, right? We just got to be able to focus and concentrate just on that sentence and then go about doing the things that we want to do. And just like Mr. Burr said, you know, just putting one foot forward and knowing, hey, if I said I'm going to cook in 15 minutes, you cook in 15 minutes and keep that consistency of being truth to self and not lying to self or procrastinating to self because then ego comes into that play and starts to adapt that. Right. But if you start to implement certain things with self, ego starts to respect that. Right. Because they don't like to be in conflict too much of, your, of another Ego just likes to try to overly dominate because ego likes to be right all the time, right? So when you see yourself, oh no, that I'm right, I'm right, you know that, hold on, maybe I'm in my egotistic ways. Maybe I need to calm down, see if this resonates with me, what I'm hearing. If it doesn't, understand why it doesn't resonate with me and maybe ask questions so I can have a better understanding and then I can give my opinion, right? Because why give an opinion to something that you may not have an understanding to, right? That's only what fools do, but you have to go through that fool process to become wise, right? So don't ever be ashamed of being a fool or not knowing or having lack of, because in due time, 
with you accumulating, accumulating the information that you need and applying it due diligently into your life, you will start to see that manifestation, right? Yes. Um, that's what I would say. Yes. A couple of things before we leave, I wanted to say, well, a couple of my sayings is, being right is overrated, right? If me being right means losing our friendship, I don't need it. We can compromise. Uh, being grown doesn't exempt you from being wrong. And <laughs> and the last one is uh, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That one, I like that one. Like and that's that. not mine. That is uh, one I got. I, I'll I'll let you know next week who who said that. Um, but anyway, that's one I live by. Because if you don't, if people don't know you care about them, they don't care about what you know and what you're trying to tell them. Yeah. So with this community, I just want to let you know this is from my heart and not just because this is what I do. I care about you. Appreciate that. Trust me. And I know you do, man. I, I was 14. I'm 32 now. You still you know what I'm saying? You be helping my mom, my sister, me, so many people. You feel me? And I, I appreciate the things that you do, man, and how you always remind me of who I am and keep me encouraged, especially when I start to be on a slowly slope and, you know, be an individual that, you know, is out there with his gavel. And you always remind me, you know, judge upon self and not upon others. So, I really appreciate you, bro. And I know that we'll do some great things. Um, like I said, I'm going to just communicate with Jordan um, and just see uh, how he feels about it and what he thinks. And, um, you know, if it's a great fit, we're definitely going to bring this to the community. Um, but everybody that's still on the class, make sure to go into the class ideas and drop some um, ideas. That's basically our survey to see like, oh, okay, cool. This is something that you guys would like. And if I got to put a poll out there, um, I will tomorrow. Um, but definitely, again, I appreciate your time, Mr. Bird. Um, I appreciate everybody else's, um, everybody that's on the class's time as well. Um, remember, tomorrow is Friday. Uh, so do take profits if you've been having a great um, week, right? Pay yourself. Um, like we always uh, mention, I know we've been slipping on that, but make sure that you do pay yourself. And if you don't pay yourself, right, make sure that you reward yourself in a, in a different fashion where maybe it's like, I like to say, go get you some ice cream or you know, do something for the wife or do something for the husband. And uh, again, appreciate you, Mr. Bird. And uh, appreciate you guys. Nice talking with you. Absolutely. All right, y'all. You already know the vibes. You don't got.